This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Senate Republicans are trying to regroup after their latest efforts to overhaul or repeal the Obamacare fail, dealing a sharp setback to Donald Trump and the GOP's seven-year quest to kill President Barack Obama's signature health care law. The defeat shook financial markets Tuesday. The dollar fell to a 10-month low over doubts that Trump could push other domestic policy priorities, such as tax reform, through a divided Congress. Expressing disappointment, Trump suggested he might let insurance markets created under Obamacare go on and then try to work with Democrats on a rescue. I think we're probably in that position where we'll just let Obamacare fail. Uh, we're not going to own it. I'm not going to own it. I can tell you the Republicans are not going to own it. We'll let Obamacare fail, and then the Democrats are going to come to us, and they're going to say, how do we fix it? How do we fix it? Or how do we come up with a new plan? The Senate Republican plan to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act collapsed Monday night after Republican Senators Jerry Moran of Kansas and Mike Lee of Utah announced they would not support the latest version of the bill, ensuring Republicans would not have enough votes to pass it. Their announcement came at the same time President Trump, who has heavily backed the Senate bill, was meeting with seven Republican senators who did support the measure. The legislation would have cut $700 billion from Medicaid. It faced opposition from all Senate Democrats, a slew of governors from both parties, the majority of the health care industry, the American Medical Association, hospitals, doctors, nurses, patient advocacy groups, and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Speaking on Tuesday, House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi applauded voters for standing up in town hall meetings and demanding their representatives reject the Republican bill. The president's statement said today his health care proposals were defeated because he didn't have the cooperation of any of the Democrats and some of the Republicans. No. He, he has never really been about increasing access, lowering costs, improving benefits. Uh, that's what the Affordable Care Act is about. So uh, the reason the Republicans in the leadership in the Senate have found themselves in the situation there is is because people have spoken out. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he'll try to push through legislation to repeal the Affordable Care Act next week and wait until after the 2018 midterm elections to propose a replacement. Meanwhile, proponents of a single-payer health care plan are organizing to urge Congress not only to stop the effort to repeal Obamacare, but to pass a bill that would guarantee Medicare for all. On Tuesday, former Vice President Al Gore became the latest prominent Democrat to speak in favor of single-payer. The private sector has not shown any ability to provide a good, accessible, affordable health care for all. I believe, for example, we ought to have a, a single-payer health care plan. Well, for more, we go to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Dr. Carol Paris, president of Physicians for a National Health Program. She was arrested Monday at the Hart Senate office during a protest against the Republican health care bill. In March, she spoke out during a Donald Trump rally where she lives in Nashville. Dr. Paris, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about your latest arrest, what you were calling for? Now, you got arrested Monday, right before the Republican health care bill collapsed. But talk about what you were calling for then and still calling for today. I'd be happy to. The, the reason that I um, decided to get arrested was to really make it clear that, as, um, as physicians, we not only oppose any bill that, that is going to be hurtful to Americans, and this bill clearly is, is hurtful, leaving 22 million people off of insurance, but um, we, we also champion and advance Medicare for all. That is really the plan that's going to, um, to accomplish what both President Obama and President Trump have said that they support, which is better benefits, lower costs, and more coverage. It's just that the ACA hasn't been able to accomplish that, and neither is uh, what the Republicans are doing. Clearly, that's not going to accomplish it. So, what the you know the only thing that's going to work is is moving forward now to Medicare for all. And so that was the messaging on Monday. Um, kill the bill, Medicare for all.
Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders said on MSNBC's All In show last night that while the American Health Care Act is not perfect, it shouldn't be uh, it should be improved, not destroyed. He laid out his suggestions for how. What we need to do is, among other things, in my view, lower the cost of prescription drugs, save consumers, save the government substantial sums of money. What we need to do is provide for a public option in every state in this country. What we need to do is lower the cost, lower Medicare eligibility from 65 to 55, and then begin the process of doing what every other major country on earth is doing, and that is guaranteeing health care to all people as a right through a Medicare for All single payer program. So, Dr. Carol Paris, if you can parse that out, first of all, is that what you are calling for? And explain what this would mean, what it means to save Obamacare and then move forward with single payer or Medicare for all. What it means to save Ob Obamacare or to save the ACA is to um, continue the cost sharing subsidies, to continue to support Medicaid expansion. But I absolutely don't agree with Senator Sanders that the way forward is to um, have a public option and lower the Medicare age from 65 to 55. That is more incremental steps, and it absolutely fails to accomplish what a, a national single-payer Medicare for All plan does, which is put everyone in the same risk pool. That's how we garner the half a trillion dollars, $500 billion of savings in administrative uh, waste and profit of the for-profit insurance industry. If we create a public option, we're just creating another opportunity for the, for the insurance industry companies, the health insurance companies, to put all the, the sickest people in the public option and keep all the healthiest young people um, in, in their plans. So, no, I, I don't agree that um, doing this incrementally is, is a good idea. We really need to go forward now um, to a national improved Medicare for all. Um, and really, the, the, the bill in Congress, H.R. 676, Congressman Conyers' bill, uh, is, is the way we need to go. So, what exactly would it look like? I mean, you have, on the one hand, President Trump saying, let Obamacare fail. First, tell us what that would mean and what it would mean if the government lets Obamacare fail, um, and then what it would mean to institute Medicare for all, how you go about doing this. Letting Obamacare fail, I think, um, is, is what the president has, has implied that he could do pretty easily. Um, the next cost-sharing subsidy payment is due out Thursday, and if— if he doesn't continue to um, to fund that, the insurance companies are going to go into even more chaos and uncertainty. And what that's going to translate into is increases in premiums, not just for people on the subsidies, but everyone in the individual market is going to see their insurance premiums go up by double digits. I've heard as high as even 52 percent. So. That's what's going to happen if, um, in the short term, if the president just allows the ACA to languish and, and fail. How do we go forward to a Medicare for all? Well, we passed Medicare in 1965, and in one year from the date the bill was passed, um, in one year, it was implemented, and it happened with um, a computer system in 1965 that was a whole lot less sophisticated than what we have right now. So I think what we are lacking is the political will to make it happen. We sure aren't lacking the popular will to have it happen. Uh, the American people want this, and what I'm seeing is a 
growing interest. I live in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and um, that's a that's a red state. Um, my congressman, Jim Cooper, is a, a blue dog Democrat. He's never supported H.R. 676 in the past. And this year, he became a co-sponsor. Um, I was really glad to hear that, that uh, Al Gore, another Tennessean, is saying, we need a national improved Medicare for all. This is coming from, from legislators in, and former legislators in a red state. That makes me very proud to be from Nashville. Well, uh, also, Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts has uh, expressed her support for single-payer. But we don't see that movement in the Senate or the House, even with 676, which has been introduced for years. It would take political capital on the part of many senators and uh, Congress members to push this forward. It would. And I think the way we're going to do this is— we're not going to wait around for our members of Congress to say, now it's politically feasible. If we wait for that, we're going to be waiting for the rest of my life, your life, and many more lives. What we have to do is, is more of what is happening in Congress right now. It's, it's like Occupy Congress, and that is having the American people join in a movement of movements. I got arrested. I was sitting in the paddy wagon with four other people, including three young millennials, incredibly energetic young people. And we discovered that we all represented different organizations and didn't know anything about each other's organizations. And yet, we'd all been arrested together, championing, um, opposing the—, the BRC, BCRA, and championing Medicare for all. So, it's going to take a movement of movements, and it's going to take the American people making it toxic for our elected officials not to get on board with this. Well, Dr. We Carol have to take the lead, and they will follow. Dr. Carol Paris, I want to thank you for being with us. President of Physicians for National Health Program arrested Monday at the Hart Senate Office Building during protests of the Republican health care bill. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to Gaza to find out what is happening there. Barely four hours, if that, of electricity per day. The U.N. says it is unlivable. Stay with us.